Some formats and mediums are easier for people to access than others. So for example, um, people who use screen readers, which um, you know, screen readers are a type of assistive technology that aid um, visually impaired and sometimes um, motor impaired individuals to access uh, computer information, to navigate websites, to do the things everybody does like email and word and everything. And so there are some there are some formats or mediums or however you describe uh, that are more easy for screen readers to access than others. So PDFs are notoriously difficult for screen reader users to access and PDFs are really popular um, but HTML is uh, more accessible um, for people with, uh, using screen readers to navigate than the PDFs. Um, and then Text-based information in general is just easier. Uh, Flash-based content is often inaccessible to screen reader users. Um, it, it, you ha it's complicated because the assistive technology has to be compatible with the medium. Whether it's a hardware device or software or a particular browser. And so these are all the kinds of considerations um, that you should have when you're talking to publishers or vendors. Um, and you know, ask those kinds of questions like, you know, have you had users with disabilities test your ebook platform or this uh, item, and and um, make sure that you know the content that you get for your course is accessible to as many learners as possible. The easiest way to see if something is uh, more or less accessible is to use the tab key on a keyboard and to see where the tab key goes on the screen. Um, and if it goes in the order that your eye would go in. Um, and so if it's kind of jumping all over the place, then it's gonna, the screen reader is gonna read it that way, possibly. So um, if it's reading, if it looks like the tab button is jumping to the place where you would expect most people to follow, you know, um, then you could presume that it's more accessible than not. But of course, un until you actually test it with a screen reader yourself, you could be tabbing <clears throat> from area to area. And for example, there could be like buttons within the E platform that say like next or conclusion or quiz uh, question one. And it's possible that those elements, those buttons don't read out loud to the screen re reader. So it could be just going, you know, from a tab to tab to tab saying nothing. And so the screen reader user wouldn't know what it means or what they're supposed to be doing. I don't, I, I think that it would be a really good experience for faculty to try it out themselves. You could always look up keyboard shortcut keys because that's how screen readers work. You use shortcut keys to access links and headings and open up a new browser and all these things. And so they could look up the shortcut keys and try it themselves. Um, but, you know, they could always also go to the Disability or Accessibility Services office and, and I, I'm sure they would be happy that you ask than not ask, you know, um, because they might already know that users have difficulty using this particular tool or... So it's always really good to uh, consult their office. Some campuses have screen reader software all over the campus and others may not. They may have them in special designated areas like within the library or within the disability services office. So uh, it might not be easy to find a screen reader on campus. Um, there is a free one. It's called NVDA. So you could download it and, and test it out yourself. But at the end of the day, it's, it's best practice to ensure that people who are proficient users um, are able to use it because that's how you know.